Okay, so here's video number two of the JAMA Super Nintendo. Uh, took me probably 45 minutes to uh, wrap up the wires nice and neat and then actually get the thing closed again because it is super packed in there and this is heavy compared to a stock uh, Super Nintendo. So uh, one of the things I'm most proud of on my first Super Nintendo, JAMA Super Nintendo, I wasn't able to do this, but watch this, the eject um, works. Now, why is that impressive uh, when, you know, it's just a stock eject button on a Super Nintendo? Of course, it still has it. Well, there's uh, just no space, no extra room inside here. And this uh, button is like a huge hinge, so it takes all the space here, and then there's this huge hinge running along here with a spring right here, uh, and it just kind of bisects the system. So uh, it would be super easy to put the controller pads here, and then uh, uh, it would just take a, no time to close it back up and stuff. But keeping the eject uh, makes it look cleaner and nicer. Uh, and uh, but it just takes a long long time a lot of extra effort so if, uh, if someone was uh, planning on making a JAMA Super Nintendo the thing that I would tell them that helps the most is uh, don't worry about uh, the wiring so much worry about where you're placing all the components that you're adding to it because uh, you, you can get your wiring perfect but if you, you can't fit here and it has to be moved here and you know your wires are too short you got to redo all your work so uh, I placed my stuff where it needed to be and then wired it and that made it a lot easier on the second one so here's the uh, JAMA Edge mounted cut away the side there for that once again, here's the barrier strip so you can customize these. Take a little flathead screwdriver um, and you can change what button goes to which uh, button on the kick harness or uh, the JAMA 123. It's all configurable. This is the kick harness. Um, oh, what else? Oh, yeah. And it also has these two. Uh, uh, RCA jacks, which are unamplified, so if you want to put that to a stereo, uh, it has a left and right stereo sound there. Uh, but just from Gemma Edge, it's always going to be mono. Um, so yeah, it's pretty clean. This is my first one, um, my first Gemma Super Nintendo. On the side, I had a little DB connector, which looked like a serial connector, uh, which connected to the sound amp that I got from some powered PC speakers um, because I just didn't have enough room because uh, that uh, sound amp was just huge so I, I couldn't fit it in there so I had to be out but this one I just barely managed to fit everything in one nice thing so this is plug and play um, pretty clean little unit I think uh, so if anybody's interested, I'm selling these. I'm making batches right now. Um, can't do Genesis right now. I made one and it works, but the different board revisions, every Genesis is different on the inside. So uh, I might make some and then just have them for sale, but I won't take orders on any more Genesis systems. But Super Nintendos are fairly easy, fairly standard. Um, just some Genesis systems won't sync to my monitor. I have a new Astro City and they just won't sync no matter what I do. Uh, and I don't know until I've spent a couple hours whether that particular sy Genesis system is going to sync or not. So uh, not a good use of my time, but the Super Nintendos are. Um, so you can just message me or uh, email me and we can work out if anyone wants a Super Nintendo system. As you can see, they're pretty clean, plug and play, a lot cheaper and smaller than a bunch of PCBs, and there's a lot of good schmucks, I guess. So uh, that's
part two of my Gemma Super Nintendo.